All righty. Ready? Um, I can feel someone saying action somewhere in the back there. All righty. <laughs> hey, hey ladies. How are you? Hi. Great. Good ladies. First of yeah, I'd like to welcome everyone to the Managers Roundtable for Women Create Worlds uh, 2020. This is the second edition that Women Create Worlds is taking place. And I'm really, really excited for this roundtable because it's featuring some women that I personally watch and look up to in the music industry. And I really thought it was important to have a panel like this because visibility um, for women in the music industry is something that is very much needed. And um, since the whole summit is all about uh, creating visibility for creative careers, I just thought that it was the easiest thing or the most important thing to actually just bring forward the other careers that are available in the music industry, especially, and that is mainly centered in the business of women. So today I have with me Fungai, Tanya, Chido, and Denai. And these are some formidable female forces who are doing some amazing things. And um, without, you know, waffling too much, I would like each of you to introduce yourself. So 30 seconds, just say who you are, who you work with, and what it is that you do. Fungai. Kush, yeah. actually, start with you. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Okay, Fungai, Kush, Zhao, everyone calls me Kush. Um, I run an advertising agency called Rogue and Associates and a talent and events management company called Kai DeFerro. Um, yep, our flagship artist is Shasha, that everyone knows, uh, which is fantastic. And that's about it for me. Thank you. Tanya. Um, hi, I'm Tanya Nyashongwena. I run Kosha Management, which is a digital marketing and brand management company, and also Jungle Entertainment Ventures, which is a digital distribution company. Um, I guess to make it easier, the management side is not necessarily just music, it's digital personalities. And I think um, our current um, budding brands are... Denim Woods, the rapper, and Sikanda Raza, the cricketer. And then on the music distribution side, our local flagship, I think, brands are Takura and Killer T. But it's bigger than Justin Zim. We're distributing for artists across Africa in the diaspora. And I think our biggest client is uh, David uh, David Do Music Worldwide with Mayu Kun. So that's quite cool. Oh. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Denai. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Denai Mubunga. Um, I am a talent manager and PR consultant. Um, I'm based in the UK um, and I look after, I'm heavily within the Afrobeats industry, but um, not just Afrobeats. Um, I look after the likes of Jules, who's uh, uh, one of the pioneers of Afrobeats within the UK. Um, I also look after Sons of Sonics, who are producers based in LA, who've done a lot of stuff for Justin Bieber, Stormzy, etc. Um, and then a, a lot of homegrown um, talents in the UK from a DJ perspective, from, from DJ Nick Tizzle to um, Mercedes Benson, as well as singer songwriters. So I've got um, my fingers in a lot of different pies. Um, and then I also dabble in a lot of events management too. All right, Chido, it's your turn. Chido. Oh, hi. So I'm, I'm Chilo Musasiwa. I run an advertising agency, uh, Chilo Advertising. We are a below the line agency that also handles quite a lot of events. Um, I also am the festival director for Let Them Trust. Um, we hold an annual schools arts festival. Um, which basically brings schools from all over Zimbabwe, now within the SADC. And then we also get them to meet um, our superheroes, all our personalities from artists, dancers, theatre practitioners. So that's like quite like what I love. I uh, also manage Amara Brown and I'm uh, in the background of Sniper Storm's work now. 
So that's that's who. Wow, this table is shaking. I mean, this virtual. <laughs> <laughs> That is a whole lot of powerful brands that you guys are managing. How, okay, we'll get into that later. Okay, so I mean, I guess the most obvious and basic question for anyone who's watching right now is, how did you get into the music business or artist management? Cheeto, do you mind kicking us off with that one? Um, okay, no, that's fine. I started off... Um, going to a lot of live shows and, and I began to shadow um, this gentleman that was managing to open jazz group. And I just, I would look at, think, you know, I'm, I'm seeing certain things that could be done a little bit better, but you know, I'm also learning the ropes because I, I didn't really know much about the industry. I started playing piano from the age of eight. Um, so I knew music, but I had never been on the administrative side of it. So just, you know, going to all of these shows and can do this. Um, and then I started, I was sort of like an assistant manager for some time. Um, and then Sniper Storm approached me and asked if, if I could manage him. And um, at that point, I was working quite a lot with Junior Bunton. Um, so I was working with Junior Bunton and then Sniper Storm approached It was just a world that I absolutely enjoyed. And, um, and, and learned a lot in the process. So it wasn't something that I knew, sort of like learned along the way and brought in other skills from, you know, just like our other learning. Um, went to quite a few courses with Pakare Pai, just so that at least, you know, you have the in-depth knowledge of all that you're getting into and you're not just waffling your way through it. Yeah. Tanya, how did you get started? Um, I think the big word for me was I was such a fan. I was a cultural junkie. I was that kid with the comb in front of her mirror 24-7. <laughs> so, um, and that I think got my, literally, and that got my hunger for, because my parents were like, well, do you even understand the business? You know, what's the point? You're an African child, blah, blah, blah. So it got me curious about the machine behind being an artist so I can qualify for my parents what, what plan I had and how I was going to make it work. But I think the more I dabbled behind the scenes, I started following people like Simon Cowell, um, Simon Fuller, uh, I mean, some major managers, even from like more town days, I started, I really became almost an obsessive teenager reading about how to make a star, how to do this and that. But uh, my official introduction was through the distribution side of business. In uni, I got to meet um, a Nigerian kid who was also just as, you know, passionate about African music and exporting it. And he's like, hey, I have this label concept called Jungle. Do you want to do you want to work with me? And I was like, dude, I'm a singer. Can you put me on iTunes? That was literally the question. <laughs> And he's like, yeah, I can put you on iTunes. And I was like, actually, can we put other people on iTunes? Because I know a lot of artists. And like, you know, so that's literally how the introduction to really understanding African music and its value or its value potential. Um, and then I think it was six years later, I finally came home. Uh, the, my big dream was always to come back to Zimbabwe and figure out how to get our narrative on that global platform or global stage. And the opportunity for me was to then manage Takura because he, we started working with him on the distribution side, but he didn't have a manager at the time. And he asked, you know, would you mind managing? And I was like, to be honest, I've never managed, but I have over the years worked with people's managers through distribution. So maybe there's some ideas I'd like to test out. And he was also, I think, open for different ideas and it allowed it to to take place because I said, hey, I'm nervous. I really don't know anything about management. I've never done it, but I am curious and have, you know, I'm a marketer. I did marketing in uni, so why not? Let's try this. So that's literally what my introduction and education behind becoming a manager came from. Dope. Then I let's hear your story. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I cool. I think for me, I said, it 
Um, it wasn't planned at all. Um, I studied a marketing degree and I was lucky enough to have a sister, a big sister, who was already in the music industry. So she was just like, look, just do work experience. Just go and see what the world is like and then you'll figure it out. And that's what I did for ages. And um, I started out doing uh, editorial. So I worked for a magazine. Um, but my passion was really about Africa. Um, from I think, and that came from my parents. My parents were always just like, know who you are. And because I was raised here, I had this longingness to go back home. So anyway, I started working for a magazine called Arise. It was a Nigerian-based magazine, but based in the UK. Okay. Um, so that kind of catapulted my career into Africa. So I started traveling to Lagos a lot and really building up my networks there, really getting to know the, the scene, the artists. And when I came back to the UK, I already had a wealth of contact from my, my previous PR experience. So it, it was just yeah. a moment to help you know, African artists who wanted to kind of make some impact in the UK and kind of raise their profile here. So I kind of just by accident kind of it kind of led myself into this PR realm. But then on that route, I started meeting really, really talented artists and producers that just wanted some help. And I said, you know what? why not let's try let's 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 do this thing properly and that's kind of how it started and you know i because i've had loads of experience with working with djs and kind of raising their profile literally taking them from an underground club dingy gig to more kind of corporate gigs um i already had some experience so it was it was just it was a no-brainer to kind of implement that with 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 artists from abroad awesome Kush, now that you've had time to think about what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, I think it's very similar. My, my, um, my degree, I think, had quite a big impact uh, for me, uh, my work experience. So I did um, a bachelor's in uh, media and communications at Brunel. And it had a like a gap year, so I had a chance to work for uh, nonstop promotions, um, which is like a, a TV plugging uh, company. So I got to see um, how the music business is in terms of um, placing artists um, such as Minding Class, um, uh, Jules Holland, and all sorts of other um, uh, artists on television. Um, then I did a bit of PR work um, for a top PR agency and at that agency I was uh, obviously still in uni but they, they liked a bit of my hustle and I was always passionate about music so um, fortunately I got to work on um, the Xbox brand so I started organizing parties across the UK uh, for Microsoft uh, Xbox and then I kind of felt like okay what else can I do? Then I started, you know, promoting unsigned acts, um, Spiller Kids and uh, back then and um, Sun Cycle guys. Uh, so, you know, getting the gigs in. And then at, at that time, I remember thinking, okay, it's not really big. <laughs> what else can I do? So, um, and then obviously I did a big shift uh, to Zim and, um, and it was good. Boys had a passion oh. for artist management, so um, yes, that's how I kind of got into it. It was it was definitely triggered uh, through uni. Yeah. Thank you so much for you guys answering that. And what I got from that was mainly um, pretty much how I guess the background of education was a good foundation for jump jump starting the career into or at least one path to take to get to where you currently are now would you say like what advice would you give in terms of like um what what uh, what a good foundation to kick off your career in music business would because i think at this table right now we have marketing and pr on the table um so i guess that actually assist in giving you some kind of vision on how to actually just, you know, create visibility for someone. But if someone hasn't studied marketing or, you know, they just have a knack <laughs> for the thing, mm -hmm. what advice or what other thing do you think that they need to actually just have to back them up to just empower them to just move forward? 
Um, I think, uh, look, um, you don't have to have a marketing degree for that. Uh -huh. um, I think the most important thing, I'm sure the ladies can uh, agree, uh, it <laughs> helps to be able to read properly. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities as you grow. Contracts are things that are very important to understand. Um, just knowing your values, something that's important. And, you know, you don't have to have a marketing degree uh, to be able to read a contract, but just it helps with that knowledge base just to give you a bit of that uh, roundedness to to be able to to know where you're going, um, really. Uh -huh. I think that's probably it. Mm -hmm. I, I would probably I add, add on to that. To add to that. Um. Yes, I was, I was just about to say, I would add to that, um, in my experience, it's been being able to, to research and network and um, having the humility to ask those that have probably walked that path before you. So, because I like to learn not only from experience, but just like she's saying, reading beyond your current capability or skill set, like read more, learn more, research as much as possible. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, just, um, with that, um, I would say. I mean, there's so much information now. It's on. Go on. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was okay. So I was basically saying that there's so much information now on the internet. So even if you can't go for formal training of a sort. You've got so much information at your fingertips. Um, yeah. It is important to know the industry that you're getting into. So definitely like asking, learning from people that are already in the industry. But the internet now gives you so much content that you can actually learn from it and then better yourself as a result. You know, and the networking, I think, is really critical. Uh, definitely. I agree. And then in terms of, um, I guess... This is a panel of women in business, um, in music business specifically. Why do you think it's important for us to just take up space? Why, is, why do you think it's important for women to sit at the tables um, and be part of, um, you know, the wheels that make the industry turn? Cheeto. You got something to say there? Can you hear me? I think her she's not frozen there. <laughs> she's frozen. Yeah, there she is. Yep. All right. She looks great. Then I? Yes. Um, I think for me, I know it's, it's cliche, but representation yeah. is extremely important. Like, if I, you know, I always, you know, my sister's my mentor, like, I've always said it, like, if I didn't have her, I wouldn't think that it would be possible that I could do it. So imagine the uh -huh. You know, for, for young girls coming up who want to work in the music industry or want to do what I do, if there isn't a me or if there isn't a fun guy, like, it will just seem even more, much more impossible. So we have to be loud. We have to speak with confidence. We have to enter rooms in places which we may think is impossible because it's so important to, just to be. That's my, that's, that's my opinion. Yeah, and I think that was actually just the main, um, re one of the main reasons, obviously, like I said earlier, why I thought it was important to have this panel so we can actually just, you know, take that visibility to the next step. Because I think Cheeto had mentioned that she was following probably like a male um, artist manager around and she had her own idea of how things should work. Uh, Tanya, you said that you were following Simon Cowell. Um, and then now there's an opportunity for you know, younger women who are trying to figure out like, you know, I want to do this music thing and this is how my brain works. And, you know, um, those who can't do teach, is that what they say? Or teach or manage, <laughs> basically. Yeah. And um, so now just trying to create a platform where we can um, really um, just shed more light on something that's uh, just easier to reach. You know, someone that you can actually just look at and say, you know what, this person looks like me, is from the same place that I'm from. You know, this doesn't seem as impossible as it could have been a long time ago. So, um, I'm again, that's why I'm really grateful that you guys are on here. 
to actually just share about the importance of actually just increasing visibility um, uh, for women in, in the music industry. Is Cheeto back with us? I know her network is pretty bad. Tanya, do you have anything to add on that? Um, I think uh, beyond representation, I just think, I mean, we have dope ideas and we really are amazing at, um, I think, at, at what we do. So it is important that more of us really come in and see that there is room at the table for our contributions to be taken into account and executed. And, uh -huh. you know, and I also think for more female artists to really shine, it, there is a need to have females at the boardroom table des deciding how to build their brands, you know, moving away from that right. old 90s sex symbol concept. And I love this about the, this current crop of female artists, you know, you can really be girl next door, just like, as in the, the look of a pop star today is so different. I think it's evidence of having more women at the table really fighting for your line of thinking or your point of view to really be, you know, allowed or um, approved by the record label, so to speak, or the investor, so to speak. So have, just having more females definitely colors the, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? The perception and also colors the output that we, we, we have. So, yeah. No, I think that's actually just a really good valid point. Like how can you represent or paint um, the picture of a female artist if you are a male. <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> yeah, I think how, that also, how does that I work? I mean, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure a lot of us have also seen uh, panels um, where, you know, they are inviting talent managers and music managers from everywhere, and then it's mostly just men or white men on yeah. a panel discussing <laughs> a whole range of things. And yeah, so we're kind of tired of the whole manals and everything like that. So this is actually dope to actually have. And then the other thing is, um, I know most of uh, you actually do manage male acts. And so now we're going into the whole perception of what, um, because there's one perception of what an artist manager actually is and what they do. Then there's the other perception of what a female um, artist manager is and does and i'm sure we've all encountered that moment uh backstage where someone asks you oh so are you dating is that your boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> well what's the situation yeah. between you guys and you're like <laughs> so, i'll see the brains I mean, behind the brand what are you saying <laughs> Right? exactly so does anyone have, does, does anyone have like a bizarre story I mean, obviously, th those things just don't happen backstage. But I'm sure, you know, when you get a booking, a request to meet ETC, anyone have, like, a funny story to share about an encounter that just left them, you know? Yeah, I, um, left <laughs> I, I used to manage uh, Audius from Tarara, um mm -hmm. for, I think, probably, like, two years. And there was a time where, sorry, hang on. Uh, no, we're not dating. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then I think somebody thought I was sort of like a groupie at that time. And they're sort of <laughs> like, <laughs> wanted me. I think it was, it was a bouncer. I'm sure it was a bouncer. And then he was sort of moving me away. I'm like, uh, excuse me. No, love. <laughs> I'm actually That's his my manager. Art. <laughs> yes, my artist. You know, do you know what I mean? And it was sort of. Like, why? why? Why is it always like that? You know, it should be about that. But um, yeah, that was a bit of an awkward one for me. It was. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, I think um, for me, it's more like, not, like, there hasn't been like a huge incident. I think it's like daily, like little things, subtle things. For example, you know, I'm trying to lock down uh, a release date for a new single for one of my clients and one of the featured artists' manager doesn't like to speak to me directly or, or didn't realize that I was management. They just thought that I was an assistant, for example. A helper. <laughs> or, or it would take, or, yeah, and, and, and at first you're thinking, why is, why is he not responding? What, is it in my head? And then, you know, you'd go back to the artist to say, can you give them a nudge? And then they'll respond. So it's things like that where you're just like, oh, you only talk to men? Hmm. Mm. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I've had quite a lot, you know. 
I had that quite. And, and actually, sometimes it would be right in your face. I remember um, going to um, before a show, and um, the guy, the, the promoter, phones sniper and says, uh, "So you're now in the habit of sending your girlfriends to pick up your money, you know?" And wow. Your and, um, <laughs> yeah, I've had that before. That. <laughs> um, oh, and and I would often guess the. <laughs> uh, situations of I uh, know manager I cannot tell this that wrong with they speak too much English you know why can't you get somebody who you know? so I used to get that quite a lot too <laughs> that is yeah. crazy <laughs> I never expected yeah. that one you know, <laughs> you always think that you're a side chick or something you or know? so I Very mean big. it would it'd be kind of funny the way it, like they would then want you when you s arrive at a space with the artist and uh -huh. you know, just the looks and the, yeah. So I think you, the female audience um, was a lot more aggressive in terms of how they would accept you within that space. So have you ever felt the need to maybe dim yourself a bit? Like if you love to wear makeup and you know you're always mm -hmm. dressed up, then you have to you know look a certain way to be taken seriously or sound a certain way to be accepted within the space that you are entering. I'm all about reading the room, which is all fair and fine. Mm -hmm. But in terms of um, you know just being less of yourself, where the most of you is actually what works for your artist, but now you feel like you're being attacked personally. Like, cause I, I, you know, I can just imagine that hearing certain comments when you're just there on the laurels of, you know, your merits and this is what you do. When someone is asking you if you are a girlfriend or a side chick, even <laughs> worse. Have you ever had like those moments <laughs> yourself where you actually have just taken a step back or, you know, what, you know, just acted differently just to move to the next thing? Me? How have those situations been like, or has it ever, ever actually ever happened for you? For me, it's I, 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 I couldn't, I don't, I don't have the chance to do that because if you okay. dip the light, you they will walk all over you. So you have to enter the room with your chest held high. If you do your light, you are doing a disservice to yourself, um, and it just gives them even more reason to 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 treat you treat them treat you how they want to treat you. So you have to be the authority. You have to teach them how to respect you. So it's, it, it's with you. Yeah. Um, I yeah, agree, like, I I, agree I, with I, you, I, 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 I haven't changed. Um, yeah, you're right. But sometimes you kind of need to put your foot down. I mean, I think um, a little bit more at times as a, a woman um, in this field, because it is predominantly men. <laughs> Um, yeah. So you kind of have to be sort of firm to be kind in a way. Um, I've I've felt that more doing business in in Africa, in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. in South Africa, that you kind of have to put your foot down a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Over here in England, it's not as you know the boundaries. There's a bit more because it's probably there's a lot more people. The industry's bigger as well. When people interact, there's a bit of a vibe. It's not really too much about the gender issue, I think, mm, or yeah. the, that sort of gray area. But I've found myself putting my foot down a little bit, bit more firmer <laughs> with uh, business in Zimbabwe and in in South Africa. Um, yeah. yeah, just just on the the conduct side. I mean, I generally don't, uh, for example, socialize with my talent uh, when let's say if you're having drinks whatever out and about there's like clear lines because sometimes someone might think oh hang on they're they're friends do you know what I mean and it's actually no we're not friends with us actually work so um but uh -huh. yeah I've, I've found that I've, I've adjusted a little bit um in in Zim and in SA yeah. absolutely I was I was literally about to to, to say that from guy to say actually in zim i've had to build the the tougher exterior because growing up in the uk i think maybe you know people are more liberal and we've had more with females in positions of power 
that people are already used to that. But in Zim, eh, I've had to dig deeper and become more of a, no, I am calling the shots for this thing. I'm the manager or I'm the project leader or whatever it is. You really have to assert yourself. Uh, like the night was saying, walking into a room with your chest held high. And I, that wasn't my natural approach to business, but it has become my go-to, especially when I'm operating in Zim. So, yeah. So what I'm getting from this is obviously um, you guys have actually worked not only locally, but, um, you know, regionally, internationally as well. So if you are looking to grow, you need to have that adaptability factor within you. Like mm -hmm. just being able to read, not just read the room, but re read it deeper without compromising yourself, but knowing that this is yeah. what needs to happen. Yeah. This is what needs to happen for, um, because obviously, obviously, the artist is the most important thing that we're just trying to make happen here. So for that to actually just go <laughs> further, that's what it's yeah. about. But also, I think mm. it's important to have the artists that you manage, that they understand uh -huh. the importance of them being in your corner. Because yeah. if mm. you are able to back you and make sure that they're yeah. respecting you, the people around them will fall in line. So Exactly. Line, I'm really... Yeah. Yeah, uh, and I'm really glad that you said that because my next question obviously was going to go into like, do we, do we feel that uh, men really need to step up in terms of being allies? And mm -hmm. really, uh, like you said, if it's a male artist that you are managing, he also needs to set the tone and say, listen, this is the person that is taking care of my business. A hundred percent. Act right. A hundred percent. All my hundred percent. Hundred thousand percent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> all, my are male. Um, all my clients are male bar one and um, I've been lucky enough to have amazing amazing um, support from them um, and just getting into a routine of you know it's just a simple thing of you know speak to my manager it's that simple mm -hmm. but it carries yeah. uh -huh. because it's like, it's like force that they have to deal with you whereas if they're just going to be like oh, I'll just do, deal with it directly then the respect will never is gone. Yeah. 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 Well, also, definitely yeah, I had that. that that is important because you can be you can be left to hang at times if you if somebody <laughs> it depends on the relationship. <laughs> you're uh, like, hang on. <laughs> if you're if you're um obviously there's a, a whole level of professionalism uh, that comes with it. Um I've 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 tend to shy away from uh, you know signing artists. Everyone wants a manager, right? But then I would say, well, what is there to manage? Okay, fine. Uh -huh. My conduct, um, you've got to respect what I'm saying, and it's got to be a two way thing um, um, when it comes to to that. Because you can have actually, I've had experience uh, before um, with with um, talent where it's like, okay. If you don't say um, directly, uh, I direct this to my manager or whatever, or direct all your queries to my manager, and then there's that crossover, and you just never know um, how things um, could end with that. But um, yeah, professionalism comes both ways. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good point. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess transitioning to the next phase of the conversation is, um, what would you guys like to see? in terms of the future of um, more women taking up space, um, doing what you guys do? And is there anything that you guys are actively working on to just um, ensure that that takes place? Whether it's mentorship, you know, do you have women hitting you up saying, hey, I like to do what you're doing, um, help me. Is anyone doing anything really well, well first, first of all, um, what would you like to see? I, I, th I think, okay, now is the time to be a woman in business. Um, the whole world is looking, you know, forward to, like, women um, leading and, and, and so forth. Um, one of the things for me, I never really looked at gender um, when I started this uh, career, even in business. Um, just focus, just always focus on... Um, what it is that you want uh, and it shouldn't be about gender 
Um, it's just uh-huh. fortunate now that the whole globe is um, supporting all things uh, to do with women in business. But Female, if, yeah. you, if you start thinking, oh, I'm going to do this because I'm a woman, then you might, there might Honestly, be room to fall victim <laughs> to certain things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just, just go ahead and do it. Um, and then um, the rest will follow. Um, if you're the star that you are, um, the world is your oyster and everything will follow. But um, it's, it, it shouldn't really be about, oh, yeah, because I'm a woman, this is, I'm going to do this. Just, just get on with it. <laughs> Work hard. <laughs> it's, uh, it's my input on that. Tanya? I mean, I would... Uh, um, I, I think um, what I would add, I mean, I agree 100% with, with what Fungai is saying. You just got to be dope at what you didn't do the work. But beyond that, I think I would really advocate for more females in investor positions within the industry because, you know, a lot of the time the muscle is the person with part with the money. And we have too many men with money dictating how we design and execute the business. Um, so, yeah, I really, you know, wish for more financially resourced women to take an interest in the arts and cultural sector and see what some creative products and these opportunities can really do, especially where I speak a lot more from being Zimbabwean, the more players we have in our cultural um, industry, the better it becomes, especially people with the resources. But we need more females with the resources because too many men are just, I know they're painting pictures and I'm not always a fan of it. (laughs) I like uh, that's a really good point. You know, um, I'll give you an. It, it depends on how you're carrying yourself as well, as a um, as a woman. I mean, if you're going mm. to sort of sexualize yourself, then you know <laughs> it might work against you. Um, there was a there was a, <laughs> a a lady that came to me that wanted me to support her, right? And um, uh-huh. <clears throat> uh, she was <laughs> in the. What field could I? Anyway, she just needed some support, right? And um, when I, when she came to me with her pitch, I felt like she didn't have to uh, sexualize herself um, in in that uh, setting, because she literally said, "Look, um, I've been trying to get sponsorship, um, and there's not many women that can sponsor um, my project, and because the men." Uh, might want a little extra service in order <laughs> to mm. uh, to give her this sponsorship, um, you know, um, wow. conditional, conditional sponsorship. Like um, if you're going to go out on a date, if you're going to, you know, sleep with this guy, you know, things like this. It shouldn't be about that. Women sometimes, I feel, um, do sell themselves a little bit too short at times. And it's, if you're determined, it might take a little bit longer um, but sometimes yeah. I just think your conduct, if you know you don't have to do shortcuts, it's tough, but you just have to keep going. So, you know, if we carry ourselves um, well, then it's, it's better. Women uh, in, in business in, in Zimbabwe, for instance, there, there's not a lot to, um, of women that we, I'm sure even this round table is fantastic, Right. But perhaps mm-hmm. we need more more events like this so that we know what the awareness is because they do exist in Zimbabwe. There's already yeah. how many people on this call already that can actually empower young girls. Um, but definitely there needs to be a strong message that um, if you're a woman, you're educated, believe and uh, strive for your dreams um, and just carry yourself properly with, uh, you know, that self-respect and, you know, uh, it will all come at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm like really big on that too, Push, because like we've been working a lot with schools over the past years. And the one thing teaching instruments, we're teaching voice control, we're teaching whatever, but nobody's actually really teaching um, so one of the things that we are doing as let them is like really going into the schools and then starting clubs and trying to not teach artist management or arts management. 
um, as a club form. And whilst advocating with the Ministry of Education, it could actually be the curriculum because that will grow a next breed of good managers, you know? Mm. And I'm really pro, like, supporting the girl child. They are two of us. Global level, you know? That's awesome. Sorry, my internet is, like, really going up and down right now. That's fine. Oh, I like everyone that. knows what goes on in Zimbabwe. <laughs> no, it's good, but um, while it's still good, <laughs> let me just ask you this. So both you and, I mean, I'm talking to Cheeto and uh, Kush, have actually, um, you guys actually have a handle, mm-hmm. have produced um, really big um, events in Zim. And um, obviously very arts-based. Yes. Um, and I wouldn't say that's a very big transition from who you guys are at the core, but um, how has it been occupying those spaces or um, I guess fitting in to say the least? Have you, has, have you felt that kind of pushback being founders and, you know, main producers of Sorry. events like that? Nah, I'll just get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, I, I don't uh, have time no. for this. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, if, if you if you start, if anybody, uh, if you pay attention to anything negative, majority of the time you won't do it. So um, mm-hmm. it's not really my nature. I just get on with it and just um, try and pull uh, the right people. I mean, when. Um, when I used to do the, the Big Chill, it was very important to, um, to have only uh, just a, a local talent-based um, uh, event. Yeah. And it was important at that time. I think people were bringing in regional acts and stuff, but I was quite strict, mm-hmm. like, okay, let's have no. local only uh, and, and mm-hmm. so forth. Um, the only pushback came from maybe competitors were like who's this lady like, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah not not really um and you know uh entertainment is about bringing people together so yeah um and i think this goes for us all i think um the support um people we know we need to do more for our entertainment industry it's not the same as mm-hmm. south africa where you've got hundreds and thousands of different options to go to even in the uk probably in the states or whatever uh it's very limited in zim so if people do work together a lot more then you know it's it works against us if we're going to uh fight the cause yeah Mm. yeah yeah definitely back in um 2011 i think it was um i used to do a lot of work with Vanessa, Mara, um, quite a number of artists to be the brand ambassadors for a lot of the advertising campaigns that we were doing. Uh-huh. Um, obviously working a lot with the Lit then had a uh, side as well. But it was like really interesting how um, I saw a kind of a shift in the corporate. Initially, there were so many big events where there was artists and whatever back in the day, sort of like started migrating over time. Um, and even like really, you know, just using people that are so popular, but like using them and associating with your brands. So I think subliminally, I've always wanted to, to be in the same ground with artists and the corporates. And I think somehow we managed to get a really good fit. What I'm hoping to happen is that we'll start recognizing the up and coming children that are still in school because they tend yeah. to be like completely forgotten up until they have got sort of a name for themselves. And that I'm really hoping we get to change with time. That she sounds amazing. And you have let them coming up soon? Yes, we do. We do. Um, on the 15th of October. Nice. And it's going to be virtual as well? 
Yes, it's going to be virtual. So it's quite interesting. It's a totally new territory for me. So it's going to be interesting how, the, how this is going to pan out. <laughs> I mean, I'll be we're taking notes for the first time. <laughs> we're all doing this for the first time, so. <laughs> Wow. It definitely is interesting. Um, obviously, we can't, you know, all sit here and not uh, discuss how COVID has been for everyone's work. Nanai, how has COVID affected um, your work this year? Besides the obvious. Absolutely livid. I was supposed to be in Zimbabwe uh, over April. So I haven't been oh, back. Oh, yeah. yeah! So that I was supposed to be a big homecoming thing. Exactly. Mm. I know. I, I know that like, my Zimbabwean family have already disowned me because every December I'm always almost in, in Ghana or Nigeria. So oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm back, you know, let's do this. <laughs> and then COVID happened. I haven't been home since 2012. That's, wow. how, how, that's how long it's been. And... You know, yeah. I know, and it's it was so important for me this year. I just couldn't believe it. I literally thought, "Is this a joke? Is this what's what's happening?" <laughs> I, I'm, I don't know. So, so I'm trying to reschedule every my flights to 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 find another time. But I, it just this doesn't look likely at the moment. But no, in terms of business, all my clients, uh -huh. like our, you know, most of our income in terms like the performance side of it. Has been cancelled. Yeah. All our gigs, we've had gigs in Ivory Coast. We've had some in Ghana, Nigeria. All have been cancelled. So we're literally just blinking. What's been the pivot there then? Like what? What other things have you tried out, or right. just okay. to you know, just to keep things going? Okay, cool. So I mean, here we the the um lockdown ban has lifted so we were able to resume like we do events um so the deep the pool of djs that i manage uh, we run um uh, nights called afro paradise um which is a celebration of african culture as well as you know so afrobeat hip-hop i'm a piano and all the rest of it so we were able uh -huh. to put on a few events to kind of recoup what we what you know what we we lost over uh, over the lockdown mm. period um but also jules is a prolific producer so he's been putting out music over lockdown consistently so if you're a producer um uh, or an artist that's and, that's you know, yeah <laughs> <laughs> just put out music there's you know the, the more music you put out the more streams you you accumulate and that's more money for you in your bank so i can you know if you're an artist i encourage you to to share your 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 talents with us because it's rewarding. Mm. And Tanya, for you being based in in Zim, Zim. how is it? How how was COVID for you? Um, how so just like the, I think just like it? yeah, I mean Zim has been really really hard here today, and I think it's probably going to be like this for a while. But um, like the I was now saying with the artist side. Fortunately for us as well, the bigger, I think, side, the other side of our business is digital distribution. And I think finally the penny dropped when it comes to our local Zimbabwean creators. They finally understood why digital is important because they have always uh. looked at, yeah, because their business model was always make a song, go perform, make a song, go perform. So, <laughs> so they didn't always Be appreciate the... Yeah, they didn't always appreciate the digital solution that we were offering. But this year, ooh, everybody is like, okay, I need to be on iTunes or how do I do it? How do I make it make sense? So that has been the positive side of this. But um, in terms of our other non-music brands, yeah, it has really been tough. It was really tough for, for Raza for a while because he, you know, cricket wasn't on for a while and it's only just got back as of September, as of August, sorry. So it was a very, yeah. very tough time for athletes and um, he really struggled. But, you know, we're really hopeful that in the new year, everything kind of stabilizes. So, so yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Um. During the 20 days of lockdown, um, she was just like, I'm getting into writing mode. So she was in isolation at the time and she was in writing mode. 
and the missing one day is finished and everybody started these online shows. I tell you, we were pretty much as booked as we would be if it was like a normal show. All that mm. took a knock in terms of what, you know, but in terms of the flow of work, it's been quite the same. And then she was doing quite a lot of panel discussions. Mm. Um, so her income was sort of like balanced. We didn't take a really big knock on the financial side. And a lot of people are looking at her as a media channel. There was also right. the angle of, can you help us promote our products? Can you help us with this? Mm -hmm. And then we've had to be very careful with what you want to associate with, because there's a very thin line between wanting to me and then touching your brand or just associating for the sake of money, you know? I see. So we actually had to be turning down a lot of things, but, but it was a very um, good space to introspect to get her to be doing things that she's not usually doing. Because, I mean, you get into this space where it's performance after performance. But mm -hmm. she's really good. And she loves to talk and, to, you know, give of herself in that respect. So I think COVID managed to bring out that side of her for quite a number. Because, I mean, I remember a lot of people saying, oh, wow, I didn't realize that, you know, you've got this much depth. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. if oh. she can write like, <laughs> like that. Right. Even in conversation, like, come on, <laughs> you know. So we're so it's an interesting time. Um, definitely, I'd say we lost maybe twenty percent of our. In it's not bad in the grand scheme of things compared to you know uh, what other artists have had to go through. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. How was it for you? I mean, well, Kush was winning BET awards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. It, it's we've been quite fortunate because it's it was a bit odd. Um, obviously, <laughs> right the height of of uh, COVID, uh, we won um, the BET award. Um, so a lot of opportunities have come about uh, digitally. Um, there's been a few campaigns that we've done. But obviously, on the on the gigging side of things, that has obviously dipped, um, you know, in terms of performance base. But it's really allowed us to to strategize a lot more. Um, you know, Shasha's um, been working on her album, so fortunately, again, that studio time. Um, uh, you know, so it's we've we've actually been fortunate. The timing's just sort of worked um, in our favor, uh, so to speak. But um, you look, the world's changing, so we'll see what happens, how much we can push ourselves. But it's, it's allowed us to, to also be a little bit calm. Um, the, the BET victory was uh, quite overwhelming at the time. Um, but it's, it's actually by force, because you can't move around too much, you actually have to, yeah. you actually, it's, it's worked in our favor to be calm <laughs> and process um, <laughs> what is possible um, mm -hmm. as well, you know, to plan properly because um, oh, sure. I know certain, I know certainly before with her gigs, all the, the, the performances, it's, it's actually quite hard to, um, to, to be organized and communicate effectively if someone's not in uh, rehearsals or performing and, and so forth. Yeah. All right. So that actually sounds like a lot of positive things actually came out of the whole world shutting down. <laughs> For, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really good. Um, all right. I have like maybe a few more Two more questions, primarily. Um, one, I guess I'll start with uh, Denai. What is a career move that you've made recently that you're really proud of? Or a career move that you made, you know, maybe a couple of years ago that you're just like, all right, that was the thing that just, you know, set, you know, set the path as it should be. Um, I think for me, it's a couple of things. Um, when I was, I, I haven't always been doing management full time. Um, uh -huh. I, I actually worked for Google um, and, you know, I was balancing Google and doing management on the side. And I think the last straw was I sent one of my DJs to Northampton instead of Southampton because oh. workload was just, <laughs> I was just I literally, yeah. It just it just wasn't it wasn't happening so i made the jump 
And I think for me, that's when I really kind of stepped into my own. And I, it, it, you know, and I'm, I'm now doing this um, on my own terms where I don't have to look to another, explain what I'm doing to other, you know, bosses or whatever. So I think that was the first thing. And then the second thing um, is helping the UK official Afrobeats charts launch in the UK. So, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, so oh, thank you. So I'm the only girl on the panel um, and we kind of, you know, it's, it was a long time coming because the Afrobeat scene, it, it has been growing for years here. Um, and to actually have, you know, an official OCC um, UK charts um, recognise the, the, um, the sales that African artists are, or what impact they're making within the UK has been an absolute honour. So I'm just, I'm just still reeling actually, because it was over lockdown that that happened. So I'm quite proud of that. And Shido, can you name one that you're doing <laughs> recent that you're about to do or has happened? Sorry, the the, the festival you did. Uh huh. Okay, um, well, the festival, yeah, that's interesting times. Um, it's an opt in <laughs> where people are giving their <laughs> their content, but we are are going around and filming um, institutions where people can then further their careers, whether it be music or theatre or whatever. Um, and that's been quite interesting. We started filming today, so it's been hitting the ground running and meeting some amazing people. In terms of um, uh, an accomplishment would be acquiring 15 hectares of land in Gomboshawa. Wow. And uh, wow. We're, yeah, we're about to build a cultural arts village. And I'm hoping that mm, that's big. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so all the ladies on this panel, I'm hoping that you'll be coming and speaking to some young men and women uh, about yes. what we're doing. Sure. Nice. We can then nurture upcoming arts managers or musicians or theater practitioners. But it's an amazing space. It's going to be um, 55 huts in total. So we're building it as huts. Um, but it's going to be an art space mm -hmm. and then there's going to be um, a mini uh, auditorium there. So you'll be able to do your recording, be able to put it back, so you'll be able to hold a Shoko festival there. Um, so it's going to be exciting. Exciting. I see you. Coming. Pleasure there. Got it. <laughs> Shout out to Shoko. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. But I hope <laughs> the answer is to do some management. That is amazing. That is really Great. exciting. Congratulations. <laughs> I know, right? Alright, Tanya, what is next? Like what can we look forward to from Kosha Management? Um well I think my what I prepared as 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 you asked it was um the career move, you know, and I think it was main, majorly influenced by uh, COVID, um, I had been nervous and shy for a long time to um, head to the corporate side of my marketing credentials and my marketing vision. Uh -huh. But I think, um, more, more than ever, I think um, COVID has made me activate that side quicker. So we have officially launched Kosher Corporate, where we, like, I think we went to Rogue in a, in a way, Fungi. Um, you know, because we have a massive talent network and trying to find, you know, cool concepts, mind concepts to get, you know, our talents to, for them to work with our talents to reach a consumer digitally is what we're really striving at. But um, beyond just the talent activation or working with talents to activate their brands, it's um, doing web development and um, digital marketing strategies for them. Um, that's um, a career pivot for me because I, for the last three years, I was strictly, or rather since 2012, I was strictly working with entertainers. So it's a new space. Corporate is a different type of ball game and it requires um, a level of decorum that I don't always have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite excited for it. <laughs> I think we all understood what you <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's, it's quite exciting. But in terms of the creative side of Kosha, um, 
we have become regional now, which I'm very excited about in terms of the brands and their reach. Um, it's been a long time coming, but I really get it. And the type of, you know, people we're now doing business with is, is exciting. And I mean, I cannot wait for one day the night for your panel um, or your chat show to profile one of our brands and their music, especially the brands from Zim, because I know you've got our Nigerian music and we're grateful for that. But um, our Zimbabwean brands, I really cannot wait to have at least one that makes your chart. They yes, have to make yeah. that chart. So, <laughs> so, so we have, we're eyeing you. We've got a lot of work to do, but we're eyeing. Um, so yeah, that's just, I think for me, the, the corporate side is the major pivot. And I've also started agriculture. So it's nerve wracking. I'm learning a lot, but yeah. So that's the other thing. But uh, that's probably for 2021 when I can really talk about it majorly. <laughs> well, ladies, this conversation has been really, I mean, it turned out better than I thought it would. I knew it would be amazing, but it was much better than that. Um, I was actually going to ask people to just give one piece of advice, but there was advice in literally every single little story or answer that you gave. And people, if people were not taking notes, I'm sorry. No, I, I was actually, taking notes. We're going to be online for at least 24 hours, so you got time to watch it again. But um, I think major takeaways were um, obviously not trying to move forward in your career based on just trying to be the first woman to do it or, you know, or not letting the fact that you want me get in the way of where you want to go. Mm. Um, also not limiting yourself with dimming your light to just um, accommodate other people. Um, the importance between the relationship between you and your artist so that nothing is ever, you know, mm. used to compromise. <laughs> and obviously the idea of doing big, um, taking advantage of your own creativity, the knowledge that you do have, and um, having that empower you and move you forward. Um, again, I can't thank you ladies enough. Thank you so much for being part of Women Create Worlds, especially being part of the Managers Roundtable. Um, in the perfect world, I would have had you ladies here with me <laughs> in her art <laughs> festival. Um, but, um, I definitely know that I'm going to reach out to each of each one of you individually, and then we can just talk more and get more in depth about, um, who you ladies are individually and what, you know, the amazing things that you bring to the table and maybe hopefully next year, um, we can do this again and it'll be bigger and better. 100%. Thank you so much for having us. Yes, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So much. Thanks folks. All righty. Okay. It was lovely. And cut. Everybody. And thank you. Thank you. <laughs>